Hello, hello. Uh, let's do the books postscript tag for 2021. Uh, this was a tag that was created by Adam at uh, Momentum at Momento Mori uh, in I think 2018, and uh, Lukash uh, of uh, the Cruel Readers Thesis has kind of. Uh, been revi pushing it, reviving it this year. So, uh, and I, you know, it's one of these like things that you watch tags and go, oh, I don't want to do this. And then you watch someone do a version of it and you think, oh, okay, I'll, I will, I will do this. I think, uh, Jim at, uh, books, reading and stuff, uh, his, his, his version seemed to push me along. So, uh, hats off to Jim, uh, a creator of many, many great tags himself. Uh, and, um, let's get on with the prompts because, I have to go to work, which is always the greatest way for me to get these things done. Um, prompt number one, the longest book you read this year and the book that took you the longest to finish. Um, probably the longest book uh, was an audio book, which was The Rhythms of War, Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archives number four, uh, which was, uh, I think in pages, it was uh, 1,232 pages long and it was ungodly number of hours. And that was basically the end of Brandon Sanderson's <laughs> Stormlight series for me. That was just like, yeah, yeah, this is very easy to listen to, read. Uh, and um, I, I was just done. I was, I, I was just done with that, that I had lost, I definitely had lost interest and you have to have interest to want to get through these, uh, gigantic fantasy tomes. Uh, I mean, they are, they're spread out, they're, they're bulky, they're, you know, all these things. Um, Juan at, uh, just, just one Islander, uh, did an amazing <laughs> vitriolic, great, greatly vitriolic, uh, review of uh, the first in the Stormlight series, and uh, that 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 was that was great fun and cathartic for me to to watch, even if I don't totally agree with ev everything he has to say. It was just great fun. Um, probably the longest um, book book would be uh, Don Quixote uh, by uh, Miguel de Cervantes, Savada, uh, the Edith Grossman uh, translation, which is only nine hundred and forty pages and manages manages within the two parts of this of this thing to pack in a hell of a, a hell of a lot a hell of a lot this was a very rewarding read if there was a series of this i would continue it <laughs> um yeah yeah and i mean for the longest it, the longest time it took me to read probably uh the west beyond the west uh, by gene barman uh not because it was a bad book or anything it's a it's a history book and um i found i i slowed down as we got clear closer to the present of the history of british columbia uh, i found the earlier chapters um on kind of early kind of the early years of uh of uh british columbia my the the province that i live in uh a lot more engaging um but yeah i finished it i finished it up i finished it up but i did take a long break which made this probably Probably the longest read I was actually preparing for on the cusp of contact, another book that I read uh, this this year. Just just finished this uh, as a buddy read with uh, Sean the Book Maniac and was uh, all about kind of those early years, uh, essays about the early years and was well, well worth it, uh, if slightly, maybe slightly repetitious uh, by the end. Um, so number two, a book you read this year that was outside of your comfort zone. I'm going to dispense with holding up stuff by at this point, because if I do, if I, and if I edited, it would just not be a thing. Um, so that's always one of those things of like, well, I picked it up and read it. So how far outside of a comfort zone is it? Uh, I mean, like, accidentally in love, uh, Suckers for Love Mysteries, number one by K. K. L. Hires, um, that might be considered outside of my <laughs> comfort zone, uh, gay, uh, tentacle, tentacle erotica. Um, but it was very fun, very readable. Uh, The First Bad Man by Miranda July. I think that would be outside of a lot of people's comfort zones, but actually it was right in my comfort zone. Um, uh, The Man from Glen Gary, uh, by Ralph Connor, a 1901, uh, novel, uh, which is something maybe it was outside of my comfort zone because I saw that Sean the Book Maniac and uh, the, guy, the fellows from uh, Codex Cantina were going, to, going, were doing a reading of it. We're going to read it and then get together for a video chat. And I kind of that inspired me to just pick it up and read it. And it's this uh, 1901 novel of kind of early Canada, and it's kind of muscular, uh, muscular Christianity, um, very kind of cheesy. In, in a lot of ways, cheesy Christianity reflects a lot of the attitudes of, of, of the time. Uh, Ronald McDonald saves Canada, basically, in that book. Good Christian fellow. 
uh, that maybe that's a good outside of outside of my comfort zone, something that I wouldn't have particularly picked up or uh, or, or 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 gone or gone through if if not for having seen seen that you know book two peer pressure book two peer pressure um that or Tarot Le Blanc uh, by uh, Jeanette uh, Motorel. Uh, I read the Robert S. Rudder translation of this 1490 kind of chivalric tale. This was definitely a spinoff from um, reading Don Quixote because uh, Tarot Le Blanc gets mentioned in Don Quixote. Uh, and it's it's a good book about kind of uh, in the sense, well, it's, it's, it's slightly, it can be kind of slightly tedious. It's 1490, so... And it is, I read the abridged version that took out, apparently took out all the boring kind of essays parts in it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, really like, it, like this, the book would be, it would have been like, uh, three times as long if I hadn't, if I had read the full, uh, probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have ma managed to read the full thing of it. Uh, but you know, very much a kind of chivalric tale. So the evil others are, uh, people of Islamic, uh, is Islamic, uh, faith. Um, and so there's that there's uh the attitudes towards women uh kind of sexual assault in the book per perpetrated by the hero um but you know it's it's uh in a different context i think coming from on the cusp of contact it's like you know uh the past is a foreign country well on, on the cusp of contact was quoting someone else uh but um that idea of just like how weird and bizarre it is though the whole thing of chivalric love is something that's definitely echoed down and we still have today and still makes, makes things, uh, can, can make things really messed up between, um, you know, us human beings in our romantic ways. Um, number three, how many books did you reread? Uh, Othello, The Tempest, Great Gatsby, and The We Free Men by, uh, Terry Pratchett. Uh, probably the favorite of those, number four, the favorite of those was probably The Great Gatsby. Um, a, it's a really, it is a, it is a great novel. Uh, nice, short, short, you know, when they can write them great and short. Wow. Um, but it was also the furthest time uh, that had probably elapsed uh, between my uh, reading of it the first time uh, and now reading it, reading it now, like a good, you know, maybe 20 years. So, um, that was, that was great because that's like, it's a different person who was reading that novel and definitely a lot of different thoughts, uh, came up there and a little different re reflections came up in, in that. So yeah, that's probably my favorite reread, my favorite reread of the year. Uh, what's a book that you read for the first time that you look forward to reading in the future? Um, undoubtedly Don Quixote is one, uh, Butter Honey Pig Bread, a Canadian novel by Francesca Ecoese, uh, an another uh, Detransition Baby by uh, Tori Peters, a third. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Don Quixote, because it's just so, it was, you know, it's one of those classics that's so dense that you, 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 you read, you, you latch onto one thing and you just keep on reading that through the thing, but yeah, I can see coming back and loosening up and and having read it all one time you're going to get a lot more out of it and i mean you yeah you could say the same thing about butter honey pig bread a book that had a happy ending that it was like was really well earned uh yeah and detransition baby um just um you know a book that kind of starts to give me a little peek as uh as a uh, cis dude into kind of um uh kind of trans trans lives uh yeah 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 so that and that's that's when you think okay is that very much of its time or if like you know if i wait 10 years and read it uh how will it how will it be better or you know will it have fallen off so that that's always interesting uh number six favorite single short story or novella that you read this year um uh i'm, I'm probably gonna go with from sex there are sections of just north of nowhere by lawrence santoro uh, a sort of uh, fantastical telling of a of a town uh, a couple of hundred miles outside of I think it's out of outside of Chicago, um, but it's very much uh, a con constructed of different people's stories. So each chapter is very much uh, can be is a lot of them are very standalone little short sections, and I I, I probably pick that probably the one about uh, them killing a god, getting swallowed by a god, and then killing it from the inside, and just you know good good catholic uh kind of uh kind of uh stuff going on there um yeah uh number seven mass appeal a book you like and would recommend to a wide variety of readers um you know it depends on even even within that like what's a mass I, I don't know if i if i read 
super, super pop popular stuff. I mean, I read Nomadland, which probably had a lot of people read it because of the movie. Um, but, um, you know, like, you know, for science fiction fans or people who are sports fans, probably the Scott Sigler's Galactic Football Series, uh, starting off with The Rookie. I didn't read that this year. I read The Gangster and uh, Stone Wolves. That's definitely, uh, that would definitely be up there. Uh, Terry Pratchett, you know, uh, I read The We Free Men, which is a great way to start the Tiffany Aikens part of that. Uh, you basically, you're, you can... You can start in any one of the different sections of the thing, just not the color of magic, because that's probably one of his weakest. That that is that is the very first of the Discworld novels, but it's also the very weakest. And actually, I'm not a big fan of the wizards uh, in general. Uh, you know, guards, guards uh, would be one. Uh, the We Free Men, the Truth, a monstrous regiment. Those are those are probably the ones that uh, I would I would go. Um, and if you're straight mystery historical fantasy, historical, not fantasy, uh, it would probably be uh, C.J. Sampson's uh, The Shard Lake series. Um, you know, starting with Dissolution, I, I, I read the next one in that series, which, of course, the name of it has evaporated me. But that's like a good historical, historical mystery thing. Uh, Specialized Appeal is number eight. A book you liked but would be hesitant to recommend to just to just anybody. Um Probably I would have a little set of a little set of stuff of that I would do, which would be the first bad man, Miranda July, the butterfly lampshade by Amy Bender, stoner by John Williams, the little stranger by Sarah Waters. That has a certain kind of an emotional core to me of a kind of a tone of kind of kind of a little uh, kind of a, a melancholy kind of inward, inward, inward tone to me. That is is what that that would be my specialized specialized re, uh, re recommendation for the for that kind of uh, reader, which I, I definitely am. Um, number nine, reflect on your year as a bookish content creator. Content uh, goals met, good bad slash memories, um, favorite video you made, etc. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's actually this is a useful thing, and I kind of scrolled back and looked at the videos for the year. I think. I think probably probably one of them would be uh, the completely non-bookish video where oh <laughs> I introduced he loves his he loves his earlobes where I introduced Theo here hey Theo yes Theo is uh, especially especially looking rumpled at the moment because we've all been <laughs> sick and nobody's had the had the energy or wherewithal to comb, but you're still pretty happy. You got to run down the hall a lot. So yeah, introducing here, Theo. I'll put you down. Introducing introducing Theo to to uh, to everybody because he he's he came into our lives this year. That was that was definitely a favorite thing. Uh, doing the my uh, video with uh, with Ja with Janine uh, couples video. Uh, and just kind of talking to her about uh, books and and just kind of coupled them in general. That was that was a fun thing. Um, we started uh, the BookTube Spin this year, Rick McDonald's BookTube Spin, and that's been really great. I've been um, I've been uh, re I was looking around for it. I've been I, I've been that's helped me kind of work my way through some of the books that I actually own, but been meaning to get to. Um, at the moment, I'm reading uh, Inferno by uh, Eileen Miles, a poet's poet's novel, uh, and just just as one of my little one of the little prompts there, and it's a nice light prompt of just you know get a pile of books he spins the wheel and then whatever number it lands on that's the number that you've assigned to your book you get to read that and that, i found that really useful i found that really useful as we've gone along um kind of uh booktube ish adjacent slightly adjacent is doing um is is uh that i've i've started doing uh journaling uh this year i've just very single one one page one page a day kind of journal thing um I filled up I filled up this one and now I'm I'm started I've started on this one and uh this is the Steve Donahue method or at least what I dub is the Steve Donahue method because he's the one who who poke po his videos uh poked me along and inspired me to do that so that was that's been uh, a really a really good a really kind of a nice addition to uh my uh, just the daily practice of uh you know listing what I did and then doing a little very, 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 for me, very short. You can see in this kind of a, how much you could get in a single page of this. Very short little, my day. Some of those days are just like, I'm so tired <laughs> or I'm so sick. And, but other ones are, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's been a little, it's, it's another little kind of thing of, uh, 
one of the things I wanted to do this year was be a little bit more thoughtful uh that had its peaks and its troughs uh we might might be in a little bit of a trough at the moment i need to i don't think i ever did any goals for 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 december um just my own personal stuff like that um yeah um big thing for me uh is glasses uh i got glasses this year uh and uh that's sort of um it's it's now that I have them, it's it's it shows me exactly how much because these are reading glasses. I'm doing all my reading here. Uh, it's been uh, how much it is uh, helped helped my reading. Um, made it just made it easier easier to read and kind of opened up all the all the books that I have around me of what I can actually uh, I can actually read. Which you know it's like why didn't I do this sooner? But I I always think about that. For stuff like that i sort of do the reverse clark kent i don't walk around with these glasses on but i i appear to you most of the time uh with these with these glasses on um i've i've turned off i turned off my comment section uh on uh on on my channel here i've got to actually i've filmed already a separate video on that if you're interested in that it may just be me working out my own stuff if you're not please don't even bother clicking on my comments thing, but I'm going to have a little report on ah, me without comments and what that's been like and what the future, what the future is. Um, uh, you know, looking back through my videos, I decided to start doing Sunday reads, Sunday reads, which oftentimes happened on, on, on Monday, but you know, there's still Sunday reads, uh, where I would just check in uh, weekly on what I was reading. Um, I, I, I sort of, I think I'm probably going to discontinue that just because what I found was uh, instead of reviewing a book, I would uh, do Sunday reads instead. So it it, it became like 50% of my channel was doing these Sunday reads. I just don't have the energy to do more than one or two videos a week, maybe just one video sometimes, a lot of times. Um, and I think I prefer that would be devoted to actually just talking about a single book. And indeed, if you look at my Sunday reads, a lot of times it just evolved into me stopping and reviewing one uh, one book or god help you review all of the books and have a geezly long geezly long video so yeah sunday reads has been an interesting experiment uh hats off to people who can make you know they have the these regular segments that go throughout all their channels but uh i you know i got reviews done but i i i'm i, I find that and probably you know when when i find a good tag video that that inspires me uh, those are the things that i actually enjoy more doing than uh than the sunday reads um yeah yeah, so that I guess is my year, my me reflecting in my year in review. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Adam over at Memento Mori. Uh, thank you, uh, Luke Cash for kind of reviving this. Thank you, Jim for doing a version that uh, seemed to get me kick kick my butt enough to uh, to actually uh, to uh, do the tag. So yeah, ah, I'm I, I I so f I think I've made it through the year. We'll see if I make it to the very end. I'm probably going to release this and a whole bunch of other videos on the 31st, but uh, let's see if I can make it. All right, more videos later.